Hey guys, what's going on? Druzy here, back again with another South Park phone destroyer video, and we're going to be doing our Team Wars this week a little bit differently, because this is the first week that I was in the Gold League here with my team, Team Nambla, as we made it to Gold League for the first time, like I said, here before. So actually, these matches that we're going to be watching in this episode today are actually pre-recorded. I actually recorded them last night at work, and then, of course, play the matches there, and we're going to review them and go over them here in this episode. So, there are seven teams in our bracket for the Golden League. There are 14 total teams in Gold League right now. Therefore, they broke them up into two different brackets of seven teams from the looks of it. So, SP Elites, Free to Play Whales, Dire Tide, Chefs Elite, Mercenaries, Ourselves, and Shezwan Sa. So, as, at the time of recording this, we were down there below. But then, as you can see here, I showcased that there are 14 total teams. So, it looked like they broke them up into two brackets of seven teams which is kind of unique obviously that's not the case in silver shield but that is the case here in gold so here is the deck for us as well for team wars we have two timmies which is kind of a disadvantage in its own right there we didn't go with uh, some other cards that we may become questionable here in some of these matches and uh, yeah there's no real direct cancel card in this deck or in any of the team wars decks that were options the closest thing that you had to direct cancel was actually Inuit Kenny who was really the only direct cancel that you, as an option and then the other closest things were lightning bolt and Aerostorm for the most part which of course lightning bolt if you have it at high enough level We'll be able to cancel someone like Mecha Timmy, cancel out someone like Stand of Many Moons, and, uh, and a few other cards as well. So how we're going to go about this episode is I'm going to showcase all the matches that I did play in this gold league. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to just break down each of the video in each of the matches. We're going to watch them together, and I'm going to commentate or and may pause if I feel it's necessary over it. Uh, if uh, there's something big that comes up or a strategy that I deem wasn't done well or was done well, whatever, whether on my side or on the other side. But if you like this format, which is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do, let me know down below in the comment section. Or if you would like, obviously, to see them live, which many of you prefer. But I felt like with my first week in Gold League, I need to be able to concentrate on the matches and not worry about also d talking to chat and things like that. So our first match against No Exits from Chef's Elite see what we got here to start so not the greatest starting hand for us right now we don't have uh awesome most we don't have any real tank we kind of wait to see what no exit does here first he's gonna go with marcus so we try to counter with the hook hand clyde of course hook hand clyde actually hits marcus for once but that's gonna get that marcus pillow off so we decide to do the same thing put our marcus back behind and then just kind of wait and see what he does now that no exit plays that standing many moves we're gonna lightning bullet take it out and then now we have Marcus to be able to throw a pillow. And then we also have, of course, Hookan Clyde working his way forward. Sharon comes out, which we didn't have Sharon. So the fact that we went with Mecha Timmy canceled out the ability to have Mess Woman Sharon, which may be the downfall in many of the matches. The fact that we had the two Timmies, even though in our minds Mecha Timmy was just so strong with his ability to just do poke damage, things like that, that we felt as a team, we collectively thought that Mecha Timmy was the better option. But... I mean, there are there are definitely situations in some of these matches where Sharon would have been extremely useful. There's no doubt about that. So the lightning bolt takes out Mega Timmy, so now he's gone. So we did use the we did get the lightning bolt used. So now if we want to play Stain of Many Moons, that's out of rotation. So we use our visitors to cancel out their visitors because ours were a level higher. And then of course we're just gonna let Ike do his thing. He's gonna die here to my new kid Zap damage. So we are losing though in the amount of damage because of Sharon's healing. It was able to nullify the Marcus pillow. So now we're just going to sit here, wait on our energy, see what we got here. And then we go ahead and play Deckhand Butters just to kind of get him out of rotation. Okay, this was probably a terrible play by myself. But at the time, A, I didn't know he had Awesome O in hand, even though I would have assumed that he did, because I don't remember if there was another tank option or what the other tank option was other than Awesome O. But I didn't have Awesome O either. So pretty much I was trying to rotate out of the Assassin Swarm that I had there with Hanky, uh, Ike, and deckhand butters so that was the reason for that play there as far as in my thought process we're just trying to get some of these assassins out of rotation there hook and clyde kills my ike which isn't a big deal but i would have liked to have gotten a few hits on the hook and clyde beforehand so now he's got a decent push here but i figured because the lightning bolt was out of rotation i should be able to be able to use my state of main moves. So I put him out here. I have Osimo. Hoping Hook Hand Clyde hits anything. Of course, he doesn't. He hits the new kid, per usual for me. 
I do get standing many moons to take out pirate ship Timmy, which I know no exits probably wasn't too concerned with. Now he's going to go with Marcus, so I felt that a, it was a decent time to use Hanky here to try to get another ability off with Stain of Many Moons. That didn't really work out super duper well, but the other big reason is Hanky is a huge counter for anything. He does so much damage at level 3 on a new kid, especially at level 14, that I figured he would be able to be useful and take that bar down. Now, unfortunately Stain of Many Moons is out again, but Hook and Clyde able to do enough damage to cancel out and kill that... Stain of Many Moons. I get Mecha Timmy out here again. I figure that there's probably going to be a Lightning Bolt, but I try to get Deckhand Butters in front of Marcus to heal Marcus back up, which is exactly what we're able to do. So then we're able to have the ability to get another pillow off. He does heal up with Sharon quickly, but I have Visitors, I have Mecha Timmy, and I have Osimo all there doing damage to that new kid, so Sharon is not going to be able to do enough damage. I, decided, I, I went back and forth on using Hanky here to try to do that. I figured I need to get Sharon out of the game there with Aerostorm, and then we're able to just hold off for the GG win against No Exit with a two-bar win. And uh, Ike wouldn't have been able to get that bar for us, but still, a good solid win there in match number one. Uh, maybe some questionable plays on my end, but all in all, obviously the result speaks for itself, and we're happy with the first victory. So I was pretty confident now after this match, getting the first win out of the way. I had a little bit of nerves going in because I figured I wouldn't be playing against Potatoes this go-around, which uh, pretty much seems to hold true throughout many of these matches. So we quickly get into another match, which means most likely we're going to be going up against another Chef's Elite player. Not that that would obviously be the case all of the time, but it is the case here. We get Side Hustle 24, which means we're going to be going up against the same deck, so or at least the same card levels, so we kind of at least know that going in. And uh, yeah, so ge generally, Osimo is the play with the tank in the back off the, off the get-go. Side goes the same route with his. Although his Osimo, I have a bit of a connection issue here because my internet connection at work can be kind of crappy, but it didn't seem to affect me anywhere negatively there. So now we're just kind of waiting this out. Because he's going to play Hook Hand Clyde, I waited to play the visitors so I wouldn't get any of them possibly canceled out by his parrot. Then he's going to go here with the Stain of Many Moons. I don't have Stain of Many Moons at the ready, but of course Aerostorm's going to cancel out visitors. At this point, I just want to get a Marcus pillow off and hope that he uses his Stain of Many Moons ability. He doesn't go for it quite a what, quite yet, and he's going to go with the Hanky. I use the Aerostorm to cancel out the Hanky here. I also have... So now Stain of Many Moons is boosted. He's got the Hanky ability. Aerostorm in my thought process there was to get Hanky off the field. Hanky was going to be a nuisance if I let him go. But I think this Aerostorm ends up being my downfall in the end. So now you have... Deckhand Butters well played there by Side Hustle. Now he's going to heal up his Stain of Many Moons. And so he's got a Stain of Many Moons. With that boosted charge, I play a Smuggler Ike into it, which was poor on my end. But again, I'm trying to get him off the field. So my thought process was probably halfway there at being good, but also terrible. But now because I don't have Aerostorm, he's got a half health awesome 4000 coming at my new kid and two visitors as well. He's also got Sharon as a possible option. Doesn't have Sharon in rotation at this time, but now Visitors with their ridiculous attack speed. Osimo with his freezing ability. That's a bar number two. Pirate Ship Timmy there wasn't probably the play, but I don't remember what my other options were at that time, so that was probably, obviously problematic. Osimo can do tons of damage there with that, and then Marcus throws the pillow, and that's a decimation that I just received from Side's Hustle. So... There were a lot of misplays there on my end. Aerostorm should have been weighted, hindsight being what it is, obviously, knowing after the fact, didn't know there at the time, but I knew that I was playing against the same deck. I didn't play it the right way. My car rotation was decent in the beginning, but having that stand of many moons early in his rotation was obviously super beneficial for him, that I couldn't really do anything much to stop it. And having a level 4 at that, I don't believe my lightning bolt would have been able to cancel it directly. So that was also problematic and not... Uh, a positive on my end for me to be able to just directly cancel. I had a bit of a wait in between matches there from between match number three or match number two and match number three and then we're going up against Phone God. Now if any of you guys don't know who Phone God is he is actually he's on Castle Bonitas obviously top three team globally and he is a Twitch streamer on Twitch.tv for South Park Phone Destroyer. 
he is a very strong player, and I knew that going in, which is why you'll see the first emote that comes out. Because I know who I'm playing against. So, I mean, you look at his elo, 82, 84. <laughs> so yeah. Now, Casa Bonita went a different route than we did. They went with Six Element Randy, which I think was also an extremely smart play by Casa Bonita's to go that route because of the fact, remember, like I said, there's no real direct cancel other than Inuit Kenny as an option, and we didn't go with Inuit Kenny, so we don't have no direct cancel whatsoever. So he is a nuisance, and he's level 4, which means he's even worse of a nuisance by going that route with Six Element Randy. So this was a smart play by Casa for obvious reasons. And I think definitely greatly benefits them as a team overall because I'm sure many of them have a very high 6th element Randy level. But we go with Marcus, get that pillow damage off. We try to get Deckhand Butters in front of Marcus to heal him up. It's unable to, it does do it, but unfortunately he dies anyways to the level 6 Deckhand Butters. So we're going to get visitors back in the back. We figure with the range along with Osimo, maybe we should have a, hopefully a decent chance. We're going to go and get Mecha Timmy out, but of course Lightning Bolt can kill the Mecha Timmy, so now Mecha Timmy's out. But it's also kind of a way to bait the Lightning Bolt to be able to use Standing Many Moons instead. So we get good old Smuggler Ike there, wailing away on Randy, as well as Osmo freezing it up. He's got his Marcus out now, so I'm trying to hope that Hook Hand Clyde does something for me here. Of course! For the second straight time, he doesn't. That's a great arrow storm there by Phone God. Wipes out pretty much my entire push. And then now he's got Marcus, who has the ability to possibly get another pillow off. Again, Pirate Ship Timmy, probably not the play there, but based on what I had in rotation, I didn't want to waste Hanky, which Hanky probably would have been the the smartest play there uh, to have, but didn't really, I felt like I'd waste Hanky if I used it there. I don't understand why Phone God didn't, okay, the heal range is much further than I thought. At first I thought the heal range, he, that Sharon was going to be out of range there with that attack, but not only was she in range to do the attack, she was also within range to melt Pirate Ship Timmy. So now my only play here really is Aerostorm. It's not going to kill Sharon, but it's going to kill all the rest of that push. Now Sharon's pretty much got a beeline to do a bunch of damage, and now Deckhand Butters' clutchness can come into play, and he's going to die. Sharon's now, uh, for some reason, in my thought process, that should have healed Sharon. I don't know why it healed his new kid. Obviously, it doesn't matter either way. His new kid was at full health, but if it would have healed Sharon, this match could have probably been over much faster than it really was. Uh, Ike's just going to go in here, but Randy's just going to easily drop kick the crap out of it. Visitors are going to do a decent amount of poke, but then Pigeons didn't see this coming. In fact, I don't even know what the option was for Pigeons that that, that was the reason that was chosen. That was kind of a, a curveball that was thrown that I was not expecting. But of course, we get the freeze there from Osimo, but then now it's trying to stop Inuit Kenny. But Inuit Kenny at level 1 is so great because he just immediately gets killed quickly, which is pretty much all you really want him to do. And now the Osimo 4000 is out, and I have nothing to pretty much stop this Randy. I try to put OK and Clyde in front to kind of tank to give my new kid a little bit of a chance to defend itself. But of course, the parrot again screws me over, goes for the Roomba instead of Randy himself, which would have been the better play there. This is another Aerostorm moment, but by then it's well too late into the match, and uh, we do lose that one there against Phone God. Very solid player overall. So unfortunately, we have one win, two losses going into match number four here. It is the Whale of All Whales. If you guys don't know who this is, uh, many of you know who this person is. I know who this person is. I knew exactly who this person was the second that they popped up on screen. It wasn't the fact that it was someone from Free to Play Wales, which is part of the name fam, I guess. Even though uh, some people in Free to Play Wales aren't my biggest fans, and I'm not really their biggest fans either. But I know who this is. This person knows who it is, and does the normal, typical thing that they do when I play this person. I don't know why thumbs up here. So yes, I'm sitting on 10 energy. I understand that. Going with Pirate Ship Timmy, just trying to see kind of what he's going to be using. So for once, my Hook Hand Clyde hits a unit. Now, unfortunately, it hits Pirate Ship Timmy, which doesn't help me. It would have much helped me against Mecha Timmy at level 5. But now I don't really know what the heck I'm supposed to do. Because obviously you want to get Osmo back in the back. I don't really have anything to really support it at the current moment. This Hook Hand Clyde's probably going to hit Osmo. Actually hits my new kid, which was kind of surprising. Here I should have frozen with Osmo to keep him back. I delayed it a little bit, which probably was mildly problematic. Now we have a level 5 
Stain of Many Moons, and a level 5 Mecha Timmy. Which basically means there's nothing I can do here. Lightning Bolt ain't even gonna put a dent in that Stain of Many Moons, which is why I cancelled it immediately. Then we got level 5 Osimo. At this point, I'm just trying the best I can to whittle down uh, Stain of Many Moons. But of course, he's still ridiculously strong. We're trying to at least keep him from getting one more charge off and just completely decimate everything. But Marcus is now basically dead. Then he's going to freeze Marcus, and then it's Inuit Kenny and Mecha Timmy just wailing away on him. And that's it. That's pretty much it. There's not really anything else I can do at this point other than just try to get Mecha Timmy away so that we don't have to deal with that. And yeah, level 7 Smuggler Ike, level 5 Marcus, I mean just way too much way too strong of cards for me to deal with here and uh because the person that i'm dealing with has almost all the cards to max level so there we go and that's a good old solid win yeah if you guys know who that is you know why i did that all right so we get a whopping 22 score for this week's team wars absolutely tore it apart everybody so, uh, so yeah, it was a, a, a big struggle, definitely, to be in Gold League, and uh, hopefully it gets a little bit easier going forward. I don't know. I, I doubt it. Obviously, some new teams will probably get thrown into the mix here in the near future with the fact that there are only 14 teams in it right now. And I think there were a decent amount of teams that were actually, you could say, were, I think, on the bubble to make it up. Let's, let's scroll down and double check. Okay, never mind. But uh, there's definitely some teams I feel like that are on the bubble here and are currently working their way forward. As of right now, as of live recording this video, we are in third place right now in the bracket. So we have moved up quite a bit as a lot of my teammates waited till Sunday to play. Uh, I've been criticized multiple times for waiting until Sunday to play my matches. So I decided to try to play it on, on, on Saturday. And I was also told in chat by some of my teammates that... Uh, some of the that they had played a couple of potatoes in their matches so i figured okay well maybe i can get the same kind of luck and of course unfortunately we did not because we faced against some very skilled players that ended up destroying my face so but thank you guys so much for watching this episode this was definitely a learning experience here in the first week of gold league and a little bit of a struggle in week one hopefully it turns around for us next week i'll probably try to do them live for you guys next week uh instead of the way i did it in this format this week but thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed it and until next time guys my name is Drusen.